Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today I want to show you a little trick. Um, a long time ago, a colleague where I was doing my dissertation showed to me. It is in Hypermesh and um, you all know, I'm sure, you know the pain of getting a structure mappable. And also maybe if you want to design your design space, but you don't really want to do cat stuff. So um, you take what's already there download a step but you have to transform it then into a um, design space geometry you will see what i mean in a minute that's um a thing here in this video so let me summarize it again let's say you want to create from a co completely constructed geometry of a product you want to create a design space easily also just using hypermesh and then you want to mesh it with hex meaning it will be a pain to make it mappable maybe even impossible as it is in our case with uh, the free form surfaces and stuff like that but you want to use hex still right so how to do that that's up for now so you see here i went to grab cd and you see here that's a saddle of a bike and i just downloaded the file and i will just import that here into hypermesh open the file as parts and you will see um, there are a lot of holes in the structure and we really don't need those uh, we could go and try to defeature that and um, actually the first idea that was exactly that and i tried that and it did not work at all um, also yeah it's a little bit because of the part it's as you can see here it's um divided into subparts which are not really merged but just put together and um well now let's start the process so first of all you see here that we can get rid of uh the components here i just pressed a letter c to switch to component selector and then i can just mark it and hit delete to delete them and now the first step is using a smooth, no, sorry, not smooth, the shrink warp mesh. Shrink warp mesh is a meshing technique which just um, meshes around the body. And you can, you can define how tight or loose you want to wrap it around. So in this case, we don't want to have those fine details like the holes and stuff like that. So we take a loose wrap and we just select all the components and give a element size i don't know really oh uh, let's say seven and we don't want to generate a solid mesh yet uh, but you could also do it like that well actually that might be maybe even a faster way but um let's skip that for now we mesh it like this and just create some yeah some other elements and you can see here it's um tries to make the structure similar to the geometry and you could also play around with tight or loose so this is loose let's see what um, the tight option here looks like yeah it still does not have any holes right so that's good but there are artifacts here which we don't really want so in this case, I will shoot for the loose option. And because I was stupid, I cannot go back now. So let's do that again. Select the components. Let's go with seven. Because now, um, loose wrap. Now we still, I'm not quite happy or there are some areas maybe I'm not quite happy with it. I want to have it a little bit more smooth. And here the smooth option works well. But before we do that, maybe give um, the geometry or the mesh here a little bit more of elements. So you can do that easily with the split option. And you have here plate elements because we have shells. So this is a 2D mesh, by the way. So. Just in case if you're wondering, if I just mask something here, you see this is all just a outer boundary. So 
All right, we wanted to split the elements. So plate elements here, element selector, I'm selecting all the elements and split all sizes, okay? I split once and you can see it's much finer now. So we have more elements to work with. And yeah, but it's still not smooth. And here the smooth option comes into play. Here, 2D, smooth. And now we can all also go to plates because same, same stuff, right? Select all the elements. And then we can give a number of iterations, for example, 30. But you can also incrementally apply them. So just enter three and then press 10 times. It's uh, the same thing. And you can see it's getting smoothed. So I'm fine for that because this is just an input geometry. And now it comes to tricky or the cool part. So let's say you want to have this geometry modeled with hex mesh. And there's no option here to do that with solid map. Um, I'm not sure actually if there is, but um, I don't think so. Fin solid, it is not. In multi solid, you don't have any uh, element options. General, not really. I'm not 100% sure that you cannot do it in this menu as well, but I'm 90% confident that you cannot. Um, because the, the stuff here is more related to mappable structures. And also you can drag um, elements. So it's always says you have a source um, source surface with elements and then you drag it into a certain direction and you create um, elements, 3D elements on the way. So this is linear drag, or line drag, linear solid, same thing. Elements to drag, elements to match, source, destination, stuff like that. You know that. But here comes the trick. Um, there's this utility menu. You can enable that if it's not enabled via the option view and then utility tab. And what this brings you is a multi multitude of options which are macros or scripts which you can use and we want to use the voxel mesh here. Shout out to Robert. Um, he he told me that I think a few years back and I didn't know about this option. It's super cool. So in Opti, you go on to topology and then you see here voxel mesh. Click that, then it asks you for components. Um, okay, it's this component where the mesh is. It's important that you have a shell mesh because it needs that as an input for the, for the geometry, kind of, for the boundaries, you could say, right? The structure, the solids should, um, should, should try to assimilate. Is it the right word? Yeah, to be similar, right? So I selected the component and press OK. And now you have this menu. So you can do an element check. I'm not really sure what this does, but I think it's um, there should not be holes in there, something like that, but not really sure. Adjust more normals. That's important that all the elements point with the normals to the outside because um, this will get used with the voxel mesh where on which side of the boundary the voxels are to be placed. And then you can say fill undercuts, for example, one component for each number of inner nodes and another options. But we will go just with the standard here. And now we have cubes, right? You could also do rectangulars, which you can then specify how they should look like. For example, if you want to have a very longer structure, it may be not be the best case to just use cube, but you can just um, ad adjust here. The shape but we will use cubes here then press just start and wait for it boom there you have it right it's all hex it's all meshed it's it's similar it's not perfect but it's similar to the original geometry i think in this case similar enough to uh, that you can just ignore it and there you go. That's an easy step up for the mesh for a design space. So I hope you liked that. Um, I'm sure there are um, many more options which I did not cover in this video. For example, to extend on a certain front or for example, also the thing with create morphing domains and adjust the geometry and then repeat the process. But I, I've just found it quite cool that you're able to do that. And I think not many know of the option that you have such a uh, gem here hidden in the utility menu like the voxel mesh so 
If you ever have a non-mappable structure and you want to for sure use hex mesh, this is one way you can achieve that. All right. Thanks everybody uh, for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, whatever you want. Um, and if you have any questions, for sure, just, just leave a note. And I'm happy to help where I can. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.